Hey, Pretty Girl Club. So, I wanted to talk about femininity today because I always just thought being feminine was inherent to being a woman. From the I've always been feminine. I don't know nothing else but being feminine. In fact, sometimes I used to have to suppress a lot of my feminine in my personal life because of either the person I was dating would I would sometimes even suppress myself around my mom. And I'm trying to figure out as to what was the reason behind it. Like, why did I have these moments where I suppressed my feminine for other people? I can't put a finger on it. I I don't know if it was a self-humbling tactic because I already knew I was attractive. And we always say in the Pretty Girl Club that because you're naturally pretty, being born naturally pretty just means when you do wear enhancements you're just gonna be like just times a million so i already know this about myself subconsciously as a child so much so because i would know this because excuse me because i would know this because i have a sister and i'm i was considered the pretty sister i'm gonna do a story time about that a whole nother video about that probably but I remember growing up, a bunch of grown-ups would come and t- to us at church and stuff and always complimented me but would never compliment my sister. And I, y'all, and I always felt uncomfortable about that. Um, and I remember always getting the boyfriends and stuff in school, and she didn't. I was considered the prettier sister to everybody. Even my current boyfriend t- told me that I'm the pretty version of my sister because he just said that randomly um about my sister when she came over to visit um because me and her look alike it's just people say I'm the prettier prettier version because my sister doesn't wear makeup and she's literally like one of those all natural girls like even her locks are not even the neat locks they're the uh let it grow how you want it to grow locks the wild type of locks like she's very i don't know that type of aesthetic very earthy natural just very you know i don't want to call my sister a plain jane but i mean there's nothing wrong with being a plain jane if that's what you prefer but my aesthetic i just like to do a little bit extra and i noticed that made situations where i would be considered the prettier sister the prettier friend the prettier this the prettier that and for some reason those situations made me feel uncomfortable because of the other person that i was with always was worried about how they felt how i always cared about how other people felt so much so to the point where sometimes i would suppress being pretty and maybe I'm having an epiphany talking about it because maybe I'm figuring it out now. Maybe because I didn't want to outshine other people or maybe that's why. Because I didn't want to outshine people. My sister, my mom, even my mom, I would do that. Subconsciously, I would do, do this just naturally. And I remember, because you know, you know how I always tell you guys, I've always been in relationships. I never not have been in a relationship. But I remember in between my last breakup and this current relationship, I would decorate my car inside with all pink stuff. All pink everything. Pink uh, seats, pink uh, driving wheel with diamonds on it. Um, my mirror, my my you know, the mirror on the top, I would have diamond stones. Very girly inside. And then I get this boyfriend because I don't know how to be single at the time. Like if I was me back then now, I probably wouldn't have jumped so quick, but I wasn't me back then. I was a pig me. Anyway, I met this new boyfriend and he pretty much turned my car back into a plain regular car because when he drives my car, yeah, he don't have his own car. We ain't even gonna get into all that today. (laughs) But he, you know, pretty much made my car unpink again. So, being in a relationship, the only downside is like, 
if your dude don't have his own car yet which you know you got we gotta raise our standards i guess we gotta do better i know i needed to do better he's getting better compared to when i first met him a lot better but when i first met him he didn't have his own car and all my pink stuff eventually over time disappeared slowly and i just started slowly picking up his man habits like not decorating and stuff and it affected how i even went about not only that but around this time we had just moved out here and i told y'all that story time about us being homeless because of the whole scam and thing so i couldn't afford to be pretty when i say pretty to me that just means dolled up my nails done my clip-ins are done or my regular hair is done what have you braids my hair is done to how i like it um and i'm not just settling for a ponytail today because i can't afford to get my hair done you know what i'm saying and my wardrobe was i was wearing i only had like five pairs of five different outfits i guess you could say and i was switching between them like very it was giving very much plain jane at the time but it is what it is so i didn't feel feminine to myself you know what i'm saying but i am a naturally feminine woman so my mannerisms are feminine and everything and it's just interesting to me when i'm on youtube and i'm scrolling and i see feminine like how to be more feminine content and i'm thinking to myself um why we, why do people like i'm always thinking to myself why do people have to teach themselves how to be feminine if because it, is, it didn't make sense to me because i thought just being a woman meant you were feminine like that's how naive you know i'm learning about you know other types of women but there's actually women who are not gay not the stud not dykes who do still don't know how to be feminine and that's the part that i guess i don't understand still i guess i do even if you were raised by like if you were raised by a bunch of boys i could understand that i can understand that but there's women who grew up around other women who don't know how to be feminine and the black community and it's just you know i just always thought it was inherent to women you know how you talk being passive and not talking back to men these type of things ladylike things i was naturally ladylike even the way i drink i hold my pinky up and it's not even on purpose but it's very so it's just something that i naturally do um i always make sure i have smell goods on when i'm going somewhere uh being feminine for me is just who i am i don't know how to be people laugh at me when i try to be manish or you know when i'm even when i curse i get picked on because i it sounds so cute like nobody takes me serious like for real it's funny to me too because you know this is just who i am i'm I don't know how to be anything else. And so, you know, I don't know. I guess I'm, I, I don't know. I just thought it was inherent to being a female. But I guess being feminine is a privilege, apparently. I guess that's what, because being, having a privilege, you don't even, if you don't realize you are experiencing something, you probably have the privilege. So, if that makes sense like white people don't think there's a thing as white privilege because they are white and they're in their that experience they don't realize they have the privilege because they're in it females were pretty privileged we don't understand what it's like to not be in this experience and not be pretty because we've always had this experience so I try to empathize with other females who don't feel pretty and how they feel and how they carry themselves in the world. I can empathize with them on that. Sometimes being pretty is annoying sometimes because people don't leave you alone. People don't stop staring at you. And, you know, another part of having a privilege is you don't realize 
the like some people want to be in your shoes so badly because they don't realize it's not really that big of a deal once you're actually on this side of the grass when the grass ain't greener the grass is greener in some areas don't get it twisted there's privileges with being pretty of course you know hence the privilege but it's also very annoying sometimes like be careful well, you know how they say be careful what you ask for because you just might get it like I hear females all the time wishing unambiguous black men would speak to them and hit on them and talk to them and not even realizing that it, a lot of them might be dusties. Not all. Not all. I just haven't met too many not dusties. You understand what I'm trying to say? Like, and when I say dusties, I just mean men who don't mean you no good, who just want something from you, who wants to use you as a trophy to show off to their homeboys. Those type of guys I'm talking about. They just want to show you off. They just only want to be with you because you're light skin. You're lighter than them. Uh, your hair, hair texture, what have you, whatever it is. It's uh, it's something it's something very uh, materialistic. It's That's what a dusty is, aside from m- money. Because for me, I'm not, I've never been that type of girl, even though I probably should start being that type of girl. Where I never cared about a man's pockets as long as he loved me. and But I feel like, I don't know. I don't know if that's a mistake I'm making. I'm only, in, yeah, I'm in my early 30s, y'all. I still have a lot to learn about life. I could be wrong. Um, My older exoticals, y'all school me. And sh- do, should I care about a man's pockets? I mean, I know I should because sh- he should be taking care of me, right? So kind of talk i'm kind of teaching myself right now too so <laughs> y'all i'm just rambling right now um i'm just trying to i'm just i'm just having a conversation with my girls i just got off of work i'm home alone the boys are getting haircuts so i'm just i got free time to talk to y'all and this was on my mind about femininity because i even have a female co-worker at work she's very mannish but I can tell she tries to be girly with her hairstyle, but the way she carries herself, like her demeanor, the way she walks, like she were like, I'm trying to think of an example of somebody like her, like Young M.A. trying to be girly. She actually is Young M.A.'s phenotype, which is funny, but imagine Young M.A. uh, with box braids or something, I don't know and some eyelashes like she's trying to be feminine she just you know she has a managed demeanor and the way she dresses she just wears jerseys and stuff i'm like you gotta change your wardrobe boo i mean i don't know like you can tell the women who try to be feminine versus the ones who just naturally are who can't help it who are like I don't know how to be mannish if I try. I really fucking don't. Like, even acting. I'm a, I'm a pursuing actor. Not a pursuing actor. I'm an aspiring actress. Right? So, you know, I need to learn how to be, like, play stud roles. Uh, I just seen a movie the other day with uh, Sandra Bullock. She played kind of a, a masculine character. And she pulled it off. Um, Miss, I don't know if y'all seen Miss Congeniality. That's a perfect example of kind of being able to just switch it the way she was able to do that. I can't do that. I don't know how to. I mean, I think I know how to do that. But it, I, I call it being a tomboy because. I mean, it's still. I feel. I still. Too, I'm too feminine. I don't even know how to be mannish, even if. Even pretend. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So, yeah, you just, it's either in you or it's not. I guess it was how, depends on how you were raised, I guess. Um, I don't know. I know it's a man's weakness, though. I think that's another reason why a lot of women who are feminine get so much male attention. Because men have a weakness. To help. like it's almost like they can't help a female who's feminine like they have to help you and 
it kind of gets annoying sometimes for me because I'm an army girl and I it's I I don't ask for help like carrying things carrying grocery bags carrying heavy stuff like I'm used to doing things by myself and because I was a single mom for you know like my baby father we didn't work out so I was in between I was going through relationships with other guys and you know dealing with that I consider that being a single mom still because I wasn't married to any I actually was married to the guy before only for like how long was we married two years only two years I think I don't even think it was that long I'll do a story time about that too probably but um I'm learning how to decenter men, and I'm doing a great job. I actually like decentering men. It's putting me focus back on me and what I like, and it's actually making me a lot happier because I'm putting myself first, doing what I want to do. Usually, things that, like for example, like okay, there will be things that I would want to do that I won't do because my boyfriend's around. For example, like. An example of this would be if we're in the car and I'm driving, right? And I'll play music he likes over what I like because I feel like my music's too corny for him. I'll get very like that. So I I don't play music I like in the car when we're in the car together because I don't want him to think my music is too corny and whatever because i like to listen to all kinds of different genres i'm not rap specific i don't just stick with one genre of just black music i listen to all kinds of music country sometimes pop i i don't i had i don't have i'm i grew up multicultural multicultural so my playlist is my shuffle list is just random things from a avril levine to beyonce to kelly Rowland to um De- Dej Loaf to um who was it uh you know Sam Smith it'll just be random and I won't play my music because I don't want him to think my music list is corny and I think that's more of a thing about my ego or something I don't know but I'm learning how to not do that anymore and do what I want to do anyway. And it makes me feel better when I'm doing what I want to do, putting myself first. I think it goes deeper than that too for, I'm I'm a lot more passive, aggressive and all of that than I want to be. And I'm changing all of that. So I've been going through this growth journey, trying to be less passive aggressive and more assertive in my life. And I'm doing good and it makes me feel better. And I would suggest those who are passive aggressive to learn how to be more assertive because trust me you're just gonna always beat yourself up when you put yourself second to people and that's what i'm i've been figuring it i've been figuring that out over the last couple weeks and i just been putting myself first this decentering men having my own youtube channels and patreon is keeping me focused on just you know making money and doing what I love to do at the same time and not thinking about what my man this that and the third like no I ain't doing that no more I was you know putting men first makes doesn't make me happy it doesn't make me feel feminine I, I, I suppress my feminine sometimes too because I'm dating somebody from the hood who wants me to wear Jordans sometimes because they're cool and sandals are corny like i come from a whole different culture than my boyfriend he's from the hood i'm not and sometimes i like to wear sandals and certain clothes my aesthetic is very different um i i don't know what my aesthetic would be compared to like holly bailey i don't know i guess okay um scandal what's her name uh olivia pope her aesthetic i compare her aesthetic to mine that's how i like to dress sometimes i i don't know if they showed her in summer clothes but like you know i I wear dresses and uh, summer dresses a lot 
of all black dresses sometimes leggings i don't like to wear jeans too much if i do wear uh, sneakers they have to be high tops because low tops make my feet look big so i'm very you know specific i don't wear sneakers all the time either because i only wear them sometimes and they make me feel masculine sometimes i have to get girly sneakers pinks they have to be pink or purple or something <laughs> but you know being feminine it is just natural to me all pink everything i would suppress a lot of my feminine just to not be as pretty around other insecure women too i noticed that too and that's something i all i don't know it's part of my people pleasing thing not wanting to outshine others make other people feel bad but i'm not doing that anymore like at this stage in my life if I were to be doing that, I'd never be myself. Like, I love being pretty. I love being, you know, girly and all of that stuff. Playing with my hair and stuff. Like, my boyfriend, like, why you don't wear your real hair sometimes? I just, like, I wear clip-ins and stuff. He was like, because I want to switch my hair. Sometimes I want to curl it. Sometimes I want it straight. Sometimes I want this. Sometimes I want that. I'm a girl. We always have this talk, like, I wear my natural hair when I'm around you. You know, I wear my natural hair when I'm at home, but when I'm going out sometimes, you know, I like to add volume and stuff. Like, I'm a girl. Why do you like to wear foundation? You don't need makeup. Uh, because I just like the way it makes my, I don't know, I like makeup. I'm, I'm a girl. I don't know. God made girls to like these things. I, I don't know. <laughs> so, and then being a creator is feminine. You know what I'm saying? So that's another part of... Because I noticed something. I'm a lot happier when I'm doing feminine things. Because you guys know I'm a videographer. When I'm recording my my boyfriend's podcast with a bunch of male rappers and boxers and stuff. Very masculine energy. And I'm not the happiest, I notice. But when I'm editing YouTube videos for y'all and I'm doing things for y'all i'm so much happier i noticed i could do this all day with y'all this is on the feminine who i am when i'm doing what i love and who what i enjoy to do you know i could do it all day i like i love being I mean, being feminine is who i am so i don't know how to be anything else i don't even know what i'm gonna title this one i just wanted to talk about you know femininity in general um, the infinite feminine is beautiful. It's I guess it's a privilege. I just honestly thought it was inherent to being a woman. I didn't know you had to be taught how to be feminine, but you know, if you don't know how to be, um, I might even start some. I might do something on Patreon with that. I know I'm starting a confession series on Patreon for those. Um, who haven't joined Patreon yet, it's only $5 a month, a cup of coffee a month, and we got all kinds of stuff on Patreon, I'm gonna make a confessions series, I'm gonna be sharing stories with you guys about things that happened in my life that I'm not that proud of, but you know, I'm, it's a confession series, so that's what that's gonna be, a bunch of story times, I'm, I post grants, I'm gonna make a grant list too, eventually, you can get my ebook on skin lightening at a discounted price. Um, for those who don't know, I skin lighten to remove my suntan from this past summer. I don't know if you guys know about California right now, but we're going through a heat wave. So the sun is beaming. Like it's like 120 today or something. It's really hot. Like, no joke, it's really hot. Like, we got hot fires and stuff and everything. So, be safe if you live in California. Because we do have that fire. Um, but yeah, I I just share with you guys methods and how to maintain your caramel complexion, your camera skin tone. You know, get rid of the dull suntan. Or those who do want to mega dose and lighten 
completely i also have resources for you guys um you can guys get merch purchase pretty girl merch on patreon as well and yeah that's about it i'm just rambling at this point just talking uh, let me know what you guys think about what i've talked about today um what's your definition of femininity are you feminine are you naturally feminine um had did you have to be taught how to be feminine uh let me know what's going on with you guys today and anything what you guys want to talk about next all of that stuff let me know in the comments and i'll talk to you guys next time thank you for listening